This episode is presented to you by NFL Sunday Ticket, now on YouTube and YouTube TV. With NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV, you can watch your favorite team's out-of-market Sunday games, plus watch up to four games at once with multi-view. Don't miss the race to the playoffs. NFL Sunday Ticket is now just $39 when bundled with YouTube TV, where you get even more football. Visit YouTube.com slash Spotify offer to sign up now. Lowest price on YouTube TV with base plan. Rest of 2023 season. Terms and embargoes apply. No cancellations. This episode is brought to you by Google Pixel, the official fan phone of the NBA and WNBA. The new Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro are built different. How? Take the audio magic eraser tool that helps block out distracting crowd noise so your play-by-play commentary sounds crystal clear. The only phone engineered by Google brings out the audio you care about so your videos sound as crisp as they look. Learn more at googlestore.com forward slash pixel NBA. Audio magic eraser requires Google Photos app. May not work on all audio elements. Apple Card is the credit card created by Apple. You earn 3% daily cash back up front when you use it to buy a new iPhone 15, AirPods, or any products at Apple. And you can automatically grow your daily cash at 4.15% annual percentage yield when you open a high-yield savings account. Apply for Apple Card in the Wallet app on iPhone. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility. Savings accounts by Goldman Sachs Bank USA member FDIC. Terms apply. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. From your morning podcast to your afternoon playlist, State Farm knows you personalize your entire day. And that's why State Farm helps you personalize your insurance with the State Farm Personal Price Plan. It offers coverage options that help protect what you care about most at an affordable price just for you. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Prices vary by state. Options selected by customer. Availability and eligibility may vary. Thad and I are here at Compass Minerals Training Center. National Performance Center. That name is way too long. Compass Minerals National Performance Center. That's why I still call it Pinnacle in my mind. Yeah, I'm going with Pinnacle. So Thad and I are here at Pinnacle. We just got done talking with Daniel Shallowy. We covered a bunch of non-soccer things as always. I think it was a good talk. It was our first time having Daniel on. I didn't blow anything. I didn't ruin it, right? No, I think I probably did more than you did. (laughs) I forgot the question I was supposed to ask. Yeah, so listen for that at the beginning. I, I let Thad ask a question, and he entirely forgot what he was going to ask. Oh, well. <laughs> it happens. But, uh, yeah, it was a good talk. We got, we got some good stuff out of Daniel, and he, he was pretty loose. He's a good interview. No, he's always a great interview. He's a great guy. By the way, we are so we're, we're at Pinnacle. It's Tuesday, and we're going to try to make this a regular thing. I've put it in my, literally in my work calendar, so my, I, I think I can get away with this every week. So. I think that would be your non-work calendar. <laughs> no, it is in my way. I said my work calendar says busy, so no one will schedule a meeting, a meeting with me. So, cool. yes, get used to it, people. These Tuesday interviews, it should become a regular thing. But again, thanks to Daniel. Thanks to Patrick for setting it up. But thanks to Daniel for putting up with all of our nonsense and being a good sport about everything and answering every question that he could legally answer. All right, we have Daniel Shallowy here. DS20 is in the house. Thad is here with me. We've come to training. We're going to try to make this a regular thing here. Daniel, we are a very Daniel positive show. We have one guy who's not here that is that will valiantly defend you in all in all chat rooms and everything. He, yeah, so this is a very Daniel positive show, and we're a very dog positive show. And that, you have that. you have a, a very adorably angry dog <laughs> named Freddy, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> I saw that this dog kind of went viral for a very angry looking picture. Yeah, so <laughs> he's, a, he's a mini schnauzer. So yeah. obviously he has this beard and uh, eyebrows. So he's... Uh, oh, those eyebrows. Yeah, very the expressive. eyebrows are the yeah. ones that actually make him always look angry. But he's the sweetest dog, honestly. Sweetest dog ever. Okay, but, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Because it looks like he's going to murder exactly you. Exactly. So uh, I posted a picture and uh, everybody picked up on it on Twitter and everything. And like, Daniel's dog's going to kill you at night. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it, was, it was funny in a way, but poor Freddy, he's a good dog. <laughs> you never yeah. noticed it, but then when they pointed it out, it's like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, true, true, true. <laughs> but it's always funny. He always looks very serious, so yeah. I like it. <laughs> yeah. He looks like that angry emoji, you know, with the eyebrows. Exactly, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> or Johnny Russell. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you name him Freddy? Yeah, where did Freddie come from? Uh, he looks like a Freddie, first of all. That's, so yeah. it came from just Freddie Mercury. Uh, I, I read a lot about schnauzers before, and they said they are very vocal. 
so he has to have a good voice but ended up actually not very loud so i'm yeah. i'm happy about it but you know it's still i like freddie and freddie mercury was a legend so he got a good name yeah no no doubt good shout so uh, yeah i heard like a lot of people in in hungary was like talking about your dog right <laughs> yes 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 so, so it, it's, it's kind of amazing you know you go viral all over the world for your dog <laughs> but uh I had I had a kind of a dumb question here because we we told you earlier that the name of the show was Shades of Blue. What does Shades of Blue sound like in Hungarian? Shades of Blue, um, kék árnyalat, kék árnyalatok. Um, actually, not bad. You know, it uh, kind of reminds me of Fifty Shades of Grey vibes, but uh, <laughs> but in a does. in a more uh, kids does. appropriate version. <laughs> Mostly, <laughs> we might we might let a word drop every once in a while. So yeah. feel free. Yeah, as you can see, we, uh, we're vaguely a soccer show. We like to talk about a bunch of nonsense, so we're, ho we're hoping you're down with that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get soccer in there at some point, though. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, I thought you wanted to ask him uh, a question. Okay, so Thad has no questions for Daniel Shalloway in this <laughs> interview. We came, z we came unprepared wholeheartedly. No, no, I didn't know which one you were referring to. We kind of <laughs> talk about several different things, and then we don't write down the plan, so, you know. Another thing we don't do. No prep. No, we prep. We just don't <laughs> write it down. <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess I don't know which one he was referring to, but I'm going to just go with the uh, season has to, you know, talk a little soccer, but season started off a little bit rough, but it seems like you guys are starting to like get into form, even though the last result was not what you guys were looking for. You know, how do you see it? And, you know, where do you see that going? Yeah, you know, it's... Um this is a tough, tough year. I feel like um, I've, I've said it before, you know, you can't really point me at any club in the world where you take out the number nine and number 10, your, your star players, and, uh, and they, they still do just as well as they were doing before. So this is, uh, this is very tough. And um, obviously we are trying our best and we are trying to find our team and our rhythm and Sometimes it's working, sometimes it isn't. Hopefully um, we can get it a more regular thing, you know. Hopefully we can win more games, uh, keep that w home winning streak going on. And it's just something that it's, it's going to be a tough year and um, hopefully we'll, we'll figure it out uh, sooner the better. I just hope uh, everybody looks at it that, that way, you know, the media, the fans, everybody realizes that, yes, you can be tough on the team, but uh, at the end of the day, you're truly missing your 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 DP number nine and your DP number ten, and that's uh, that's a that's a hard hit for any teams. Other players have to uh, have to step up. Hopefully, uh, I can I can help the team and um, and get some wins and get some goals in there. Yeah, we get we get hated on for not being mean enough to the team. So yes, we we make we we do that a lot. We get accused of making excuses a lot there. <laughs> Actually, Cody sometimes tries to get us to like be mean so we can like you know have hot takes. I'm like, yeah, it doesn't really work. We'll yeah, we'll do it, yes. but then we'll counter it at the end. We it, so. we recorded one last night. I was trying to be like true sports radio gas bag, like point some fingers and all this. So what what do you think? Like in your eyes, what what do you think is not going right with? with the team right now or what 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 is an, an a, a one overlying issue that that you think is an issue right now well the those two players who i mentioned you know alan pulido and gary kinda they are they were, were and uh, they are a huge part of the team and uh you you need them to be healthy and gary will help us this year because he will be back but alan will not be so this is uh this is a very long season very long season and you need to you need to figure it out you know there's teams who and, and, and players who sign in new leagues and they, they struggle their, their first whole year. And we're not trying to do that, obviously, but we, we brought in a couple of guys and they need to, you know, find that consistency and, uh, you know, that chemistry with the team. And once we have that, we can have a, a solid group. And uh, hopefully once we, once we figure that part out and have uh, everybody on board, then and you just have to have players who, who win the games and, and, and step up and, that's what um, that's what our goal is, and to have this the sooner as possible because um, you can't get lost uh, to the top of the league so far. You know, early on in the season, you talk about the the number nine and the number ten, but not not just the the you know Polito and and Kinda, but you, Kyrie and Johnny were all out for what a couple of games, and then you know yes. varying stages of getting back in form and health. That's got to be. I mean, no team can take out that many players and still be at the top exactly so this is what um 
we have to work on. And, you know, this is, uh, once again, not trying to make excuses or anything. This is a tough start. We have to figure it out. We have to have everybody healthy. We will still have injuries. We still have to have players to step up, even from the subs and everybody. But um, it's going to take a while. And I always noticed on teams in MLS, actually, some teams don't even worry until August what's yeah. happening what's happening with their team and then they just step it up and make it to the playoffs. I hope we figure it out before August. <laughs> I yeah, want we, to we figure all, We all do. <laughs> yes, but uh, at the end of the day, um, you can have an amazing regular season and uh, like last year, you lose in the playoffs and still everybody is, is pissed, you know, that you lost. And um, I, I'd rather win the cup than have an amazing regular season. If you can do both, it's great. But uh, if, if we only figure, out, figure it out for the playoffs, I'll sign the papers right now. And that is one of the great things about MLS versus maybe some leagues around the world. You, you start off poor in the first 10 games and in the rest of the world, and you're done. You yes. know? I mean, you're just playing for not relegating, right? Here, you can play and get into the playoffs and maybe finish fifth or something like that and then go on a run, and you're hosting a trophy at the end. Yes, that's why this league is very interesting and uh, – some leagues in the world could could uh, could use this format. The ones where you know you only have one team winning the league all the time, and and you need to you know make it more interesting. But I get it. You know you don't want to change the the traditional European way. Um, I feel like both continents could learn from each other a little bit, yeah, and uh, go closer to each other. But um, it's gonna take time. What what does the uh, North American league need to learn from Europe? Well, you know, the budget thing is good, but you need to raise it a little bit. You need to have, you're trying to compete against uh, these uh, Mexican teams in the CONCACAF Champions League, and you need to have bigger budgets for that, and you need to, you know, bring more more money in and more, uh, more players, because some teams really use three top players for their team, and, uh, and then the rest is just there, you know. So... That, those are the things that uh, Europe has it over. You can just put unlimited money in a way uh, in their club and, uh, and just go for it. And we don't, we don't have that, and you have to be, be smart about it. But it's still unbelievable how the league has uh, improved over the years with even like this budget, uh, budget rule. Yeah, the budget does seem to keep going up, and I, I'm sure you would hope that the budget would increase dramatically this year since you might be needing to sign a new contract soon, right? <laughs> yes, yes, of course, of course. Everybody's uh, in, in the game at the end of the day to make money, so uh, yes, uh, hopefully uh, it, it keeps increasing, yes. So, so no pressure, but can you give us any hints of where you're at with signing or not signing or any interest from... The question you were ready, you were ready for. Yeah, yeah, I'm, sure, yes. I'm sure Patrick prepped and said, "Yeah, Patrick, that's going to happen." I asked yeah. Patrick what we're going to talk about. He said, "They're going to ask you about your contract. That's for sure." So, <laughs> look, um, yes, we're just I, doing I don't our have. Jobs. Yes, yes, I understand. <laughs> I understand. We got to uh, have fun, but we also got to like you right. know, somewhat be serious once in a while. Yes, uh, obviously. Look, um, I I cannot update you, and there's um, you know, no, no update yet, and uh, we'll see what happens. I. The only thing I can say is, you know, I uh, I love this club, I love this um, this organization, I, I I love the fans, everything. I've I've played here since I was uh, I was a teenager, and uh, I'm turning 26 in the summer, which is actually crazy. A day after me, by the way, birthday well, buddies. We'll celebrate together. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so so yes, uh, that's that's in my mind, obviously, um, but at the end of the day. Um, I, I'll have to do what's best for me. Whatever's going to be on the table, uh, I'll have to pick from that. Right now, there is no update. I'm trying to focus on uh, playing my best game and uh, scoring goals and helping the team because it's, you know, I had a great year, but this is a, a very important year for me as well to uh, to try to score as many goals and, and have a consistency in my career. And that's, uh, that's my plan right now. And I'll let the, uh, you know, my my people, my agent, my my family, everybody else worry about uh, the contract situation. Well, they can call us and talk about it if they want to. Yes, for sure. <laughs> I'll give you my uh, agent's number. <laughs> you know, though, I, I I really didn't ever expect a, a much more than that. I'll be honest. You ha we have to ask the question, but I know that Peter also probably doesn't love for players to talk about negotiations in public because it probably you know he'd rather have it keep it quiet and then just boom, it's done or it's not done. Yes, yes, I. Uh, I agree, and uh, that's all I can really say. Um, 
So we can just leave it at this and maybe come back in a couple of months and talk about it again. There we go. Yeah. So Peter Vermees is a very he keeps a, he runs a tight ship. He's gonna he's gonna keep things solid like that. I wonder. Um, I, I want some Peter Vermees stories here. When is the time that Peter Vermees like scared you? He got into a mode that was like everyone on the team was like, "All right, this guy, this is a new level of Peter Vermees." Look, I have a different uh, perspective that most because I play, you know, on the and guys who play on the on the wings or either left back or uh, left wing or right back, right wing, you are always, Those at least the, for one half, yeah. right in front of Peter. <laughs> yeah. So you get the best out, you hear everything when you're on his side, and that's... Uh, and that, that, in that position in particular, he's very demanding. Uh, yes, so. yes, so, <laughs> so you have to, you know, in a way, focus, but at the same time, like, listen to him, and at the same time, shut him off sometimes, because you need to focus, so it's, it's a very difficult thing, but... Yes, he's a uh, he's a very you know demanding coach, and he he knows what he wants. And um, look, I don't mind uh, you know asking uh, discipline from players and uh, and and trying to be everybody on top of their game. It's um, it's something that everybody has to have, and um, he's he can be scary. Yes, but I'll tell you what he was. Much more scarier when I was with the academy, right. and, you know, coming into the league. I, I remember I played with the academy, and Peter would come out to watch the training, and you're like <laughs> heels together. You're oh, okay. I, he's here. He's watching. So he's it, he's an imposing presence. Yes, here, yes. Yeah. So you have to be, you know, uh, on on top of your game when uh, when you are younger, and then you you kind of get used to uh, how to deal with him when you are when you are older. But he's still a very demanding coach. Just think uh, how bad off the uh, AR and the fourth official has it. Yes, yes, that's for sure. <laughs> they get the whole game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so something else I wanted to ask you about. Uh, Kyrie Shelton this week got to got to kind of live the dream that all players have wanted to do at one point or another and make that post about the referees on social media. And so I'm wondering, like, how your reaction – did you know that this was happening? Did you did you just open, up, open it up the next day and just go, oh, my God, Kyrie, you're going to get fined for that? I did exactly that. <laughs> yes, I. Uh, I didn't know he posted that until uh, until later. Um, I would say it was too late when I noticed it. Um, too late to help him. Kyrie is like that. He likes to, um, you know, express his feelings uh, to the world. And um, look, in a way, there's no problem with that. I think you can have an opinion. I hate when you get fined for things that you know. The referees admit to mistakes they make during games, but if you say that they make a mistake, you get fined for it. So it's uh, it's 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 a very you know double standard. It's it's yeah. tough. It is, and so you can go ahead. No, I was just agreeing. Yeah, it's I, I I can't imagine why. I mean, you should be able to say yeah, the refs made a mistake. I mean, you can't call them names or something like that, but you should yes. be able to say yeah, you guys screwed up. And, yeah. and his he 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 has a point too. We we discussed this on on the podcast last night that. You know, Kyrie is just such a strong player that what it what it takes to physic the strength with which you must have to foul him and get him off his off you know his center of gravity is going to be a lot more than than another player on the field. And so I just I'm I'm curious as to how you how you see that and like what kind of beating that Kyrie takes every game. <laughs> yes, it's very difficult, but I always give him a you know I, I always tell him that he. He's not European. He didn't learn how to, you know, dive or do good, uh, good <laughs> falling or something. He's he's actually terrible at it. He's terrible at selling fouls. Sometimes he gets fouled really bad, and he yeah. is actually so bad at, uh, you know, knowing how to make it look like it was a foul. It's it's an art. Let's be real. It's, yes. a, it's an art to be able to do it. Who, who, what country is best at that? <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be, gotta be like, like South We'll America, watch it at the World right? Cup and we'll decide there after. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, I know there's a couple of countries in Europe, but I, I'm going to lean South America for that. It's got to yes. be somewhere in South America. <laughs> South America. Actually, Ilya was always amazing at it. Oh, I always yeah. admired him. He did the yelling, too. It's... Uh, you, it's the point is, I, I always get it from uh, actually people who are not big soccer fans. They're like, oh, I don't like soccer because people dive. Yes. And I always tell them, look, if I dive and I get the PK and we win the game, I make money. Should I dive? <laughs> and they are like, well, if you put it that way. Exactly. So yeah. in, in football, you can't dive. Of course you can't. But in this sport, if you can use the foul in, in your advantage, do it. See, yeah. he's proving my point. I went on a rant about that. It's like if, if it 
if it's going to reward the players, they're going to keep doing it. Yeah. But, but that's why we also have to have the refs do better. Yes, yes, yes. 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 So the thing, the, my thing with all this is players don't try to stay on their feet to get that shot off. They'll, they'll go down. So it's like my whole thing is they need to give both of them. They need to let the player get that shot off, and if it doesn't go in, also give them the foul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's so tough, obviously. I'm not saying the referees have an easy job because, oh, you know, yeah. if, if everybody keeps diving, it's tough to uh, make the right calls. But uh, at the end of the day, I think um, everybody has to do their best to, you know, put the team in a good advantage. Yep. All right, going back to Kyrie for a second. This is probably the question I was supposed to ask earlier, and I totally spaced. So uh, Kyrie was a subject of a April Fool's prank or, or April Fool's joke earlier this week. Uh, were you a little jealous they didn't use you? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm glad they didn't because my girlfriend and, actually believed. And so believed, is his girlfriend, exactly. My girlfriend actually <laughs> believed that Kyrie's going to the Bachelor. So I can't even imagine if they put my face there. She would have been like, what are you doing? <laughs> So, yeah, it's, uh, but it was funny. It was funny. I think it was good. I hope many people fell for it. Yeah, I hear an actual outlet somewhere fell for it. Oh, I had all sorts of people messaging me, so. Yeah, a couple, <laughs> a couple of the women on our site was like, no. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it, would, it would be fun to see for sure, for sure. Would, it, would he be the best option for that? Yeah, who, who else would do really well as a, a, on the show The Bachelor? Kyrie, Ky I mean, I personally never actually watched it, Uh I was supposed to be on that on stage thingy, yeah. and uh, that's when they told me I had to do questions like who was my favorite bachelor and stuff, and I've never watched an episode of it, so it was. Oh it god, was, <laughs> it was like I'm I'm so sorry, yeah. but I'm. So I that actually, was like actually an official offshoot of that show. Yes. Oh, okay. I they didn't. actually brought it back in. I just saw it, so they stopped it for COVID, and yeah. now they are doing it again. So. So you were you like answered all the you went through all the motions and were ready to do it, and then it just yeah, didn't happen. Yeah, literally that day. <laughs> that day our training got canceled and the world stopped the world i remember it was it was that way it was over a two-day period just the world literally just stopped yeah because yeah. you, you guys were supposed to leave to go to i think atlanta yes exactly because i came out the training got an interview with peter and you know talk about the game and you know what do you expect from atlanta and stuff like that and when we got done i turned off the recorder he goes we're not going it's just not official yet i said okay <laughs> Yeah, we saw him, like, get on the phone during that training, and we, we obviously NBA stopped by that point, like, oh, yeah. late, either the day before or something like that. So we knew that we were next, and we saw Peter on the phone while we were training, and we were like, okay, so we're not going. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, reminiscing. The good yeah. old days, pre-pandemic. Good times. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. Thank you very much for joining us, Daniel. Yes, yeah. thanks for having me. Good luck. Go score a bunch of goals. Help appreciate your, it. Help thank your contract you. negotiations that we won't mention anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'll keep you guys posted. Yeah. And we'll, uh, we'll have you back on here soon. Sounds good.